Take your Bibles, we're in Matthew, we're in Proverbs, and, and over the last several weeks we've been talking about change. We're in a new year, right? We're here, it's January, it's 2013, whether you like it or not, it's the new year. Uh, we've been looking at some things in the Bible in particular, we've been looking at Mary and Martha, and it was Lazarus and Simon the leper, and they're all at a house, and Jesus is there, and they're, they're going to serve them, and, and Martha's going to do all this serving, and Mary's at his feet, and, and we talked about how obedient we should be. Obedience help us make change in our life, right? We're, we, you know, we started at the new year. A lot of us commit to making change. And we, we said some things about change that are important just from the experts of the world, right? There's things we should be doing, and I, and I pray that you're doing that, uh, that you, you're making that change, right? You have an accountability partner because you have to have that. You really do. Whether it's, maybe, maybe your spouse, not that you don't get along, but Maybe you really don't hold each other accountable. You, maybe you got to branch out and pick someone else out and say, hold me accountable to this spiritual change. So we talked about obedience. We went the next week, we talked about enthusiasm, right? You want to make a change, you got to be enthusiastic about it. Remember Mary, she's at the feet of Jesus and she reads over and she, she grabs this ointment and it, and it was worth, I mean, I just, it blows my mind. It was worth one year's wage. Now for us, that varies, Amen. <laughs> And some of us is like, well, yeah, I know that. And some of us is like, wow, that really hurts. And then she just pours that over the head and feet of Jesus. Enthusiasm. Even when those around her was like, what in the world are you doing? Last week we said if we want to make a change, we've got to make a lasting change. If you want it to stick, right? Remember what the expert said? If you do something for 30 days, you're three times more likely to succeed. 30 days. Those are bad habits and good habits, by the way. Amen. <laughs> Bad habits, good habits. Change. I said lasting change comes from lasting words. I said if there's anything we need to know, it's God's word. It's not just coming out on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. It's not just hearing what someone says. It's not our opinion or our interpretation. It's going home when we're alone and we're before God and we're there and we read his word and it applies to our life. That's how we're changed because these are words that last. Amen. So here we are. We're moving along with God's word. We've been talking about commitment. And I just want to pick up in Proverbs chapter 14. And I just want you to hear what this says here. And notice where we are. Proverbs chapter 14. Um, in particular, we'll look at verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. And notice what the Bible says. There is a way. Notice what it says here. And I just take away the world, everything you're going through. I know it's difficult, things that's happening after just, just a moment. There is a way. Maybe we'll bracket that off. Maybe we'll look at it. There is a path before each and every person here today. And that's what the Bible says. It says before each and every one of us, there is a path that we have to decide which path we're going to take. I, and we've been doing some different things at the house. I'm just going to tell you right up front. We've been doing some different things, and, uh, and we're, we're on some kicks, I like to say. We're on some different stuff, and, and we, we've, been eating, we've been eating better. <laughs> Did anybody go through those things? I mean, good. I want sis to know who that man in that picture was. <laughs> I mean, I can't get the, I can't get the, the, the color back, but... Uh, I can, I can get back a little bit, you know. And I, we, we've been packing these drinks for the kids. I, it, it, well, don't, don't get, I, mean, I was thrown away too. Organic juice, just all natural, no preservatives. Some, just, just go with me, right? Humor me. And, and we're packing those into lunch because they, they drink a lot of the, the juice and sugars and stuff. And so I've noticed all week they're coming home, and guess what's still in the lunch? <laughs> So, uh, and it's organic, natural. I said, well, you know what? They didn't even poke a hole in the thing. I mean, how do you even know? Well, Connor can read now, right? So he's, he's got this figured out. I, I don't know what organic means, but it can't be good. Right? <laughs> and uh, so I'm asking, you know, I, you know, Cindy's like, and I'm thinking in my mind, I know what's going on. That rascal's going over and taking chocolate milk from the cafeteria. I'm on to this kid. He's taking chocolate milk from the cafeteria. So Cindy says, there's a lot of drinks in here, honey. What's going on? And his eyes get real big, you know. Baby, what have you been doing? 
He's been charging milk for a week. <laughs> On his account. There's a, there's a lot of problems with that, with that picture. One, an eight-year-old shouldn't be charging, and two, he shouldn't have an account. Amen. <laughs> But I'm telling you who's paying for that. It's not Connor. It's daddy. daddy. <laughs> well, mommy, too, I know. Everybody. I say, Connor, you, you can't do that. Well, here's the thing. And, and, and that's humorous, right? And we're thinking about that. And we're looking. And these are the subtle things of life. And to Connor, that was the right thing to do. There's no harm done. There's nothing. I, I mean, I needed something to drink. I've, I've got to have this. There's nothing wrong with it. I can see it. I can, and, I, and I like it, and I grab it, and there's nothing wrong with that. And notice what the Bible says. There is a way. There's a path before each and every one of us. There are decisions that we have to make. I'm here to encourage you. Make them today. It may be your last day. That's the truth. I'm here to give you the truth. That's all I'm going to do. I, I'm, not, I'm not here to be educated. I'm not here to motivate you. I'm not here to move you. Here's what I'm here to do. God has called me to preach his word, and I just want to give you his word. And here's what God says in his word. There is a way before each and every single person that seems right to you. There's a way. And we are living a certain way in life that we agree with and we feel okay with and it's okay. And notice what it says here. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. This path seems like the right way. But notice what it says. But the end thereof are the ways of death. He says, man, there's this path that, that, that you're on. A multitude of us here this morning, they we're on this path and it seems like the right thing. And God warns us in his word. He said, that path you're on, that seems right, is going to take you to hell because it's going to end in death. And this is the warning, right? This, this is the message. This is, you're going to go out into the world and hear a multitude of messages. And God says, just, just hang on to my word. And for thousands of years, this is held true. Thousands of years, it's held true. From, from the beginning to the end. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 2. I want you to hear this this morning because I think it's this important. And I want, I want you to just kind of focus in on this thought. Your decisions, not your intentions, determine your destination. I'm going to say it again because I want you to get this. And if you're taking notes, I want you to jot it down because this is, this is, the, this is the moment. This is the thing. Your decisions, not your intentions, determine your destination. It's not the intentions that we have that will determine where we go. It's the decisions that we make. And some of us have good intentions to get to heaven. But your good intentions will not get you there. It's the decision you make. A multitude of the world has good intentions. Our family has good intentions. Believe it or not, the church has good intentions. But it may not always be right. And we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful with our own interpretations and our own opinions and our own thoughts and our own way of doing things and our own boxes and our own shells. And we've got to be careful because there's a lost and dying world that need to know the truth. Take your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 7. We're talking about a way that seems right. We're talking about silly things, small things. It seemed right to Connor to do that, right? I mean, that was right. I'm trying, I'm trying to get into his mind. Uh, yeah, would I do that? My dad would wear me out. No, I wouldn't do that, right? My little girl tells me last night, she said, I just want to tell you, you're weak. <laughs> Weak. I said, weak? Do you even know what weak means? She said, yeah, you never get us in trouble. <laughs> That's weak. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Hurry up, here comes mommy, you know. <laughs> oh, weak. <laughs> and mommy will lower the boom now. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm trying to balance that out. <laughs> yeah. I had some of you lowering the boom, I hear you. Matthew chapter 7. Notice what the Bible says, verse 13. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way 
Uh, what's he saying? You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. Now, this thing's been true for, you know, it's been written over 1,500 years, 40 or so different authors. They didn't know each other. It's always meshed. And this is, now notice what he said here. You can only enter God's kingdom through the narrow gate. Because the Bible says in verse 13, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go uh, in thereat. He says there's a lot of people. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of people and a large majority of people who are picking this path. Uh, and on this path, it's a huge path. And he said there's a lot of people on there. And on this huge path, there's many different paths. But don't be confused. There's two different ways. There's two paths in life. It's either the path that's straight and narrow or it's the wide path. There's not a multitude of them according to the Bible and according to God's Word. And here's what he says. He says there's many different paths that you can choose, but you're on the same path. And it leads to destruction. There's the payday coming, amen? That's right. I, if my boy keeps charging milk, there's payday coming. <laughs> Somebody wants their money, right? They, they gonna, somebody's paying up on this thing. And they'll send these little notes. You owe $75 in chocolate milk. <laughs> and I don't like it. I don't like it. All right? I, I, don't, I don't want that. Spiritually speaking this morning, God says there's a path. It's a large path. It's a broad path. He said, here, when you're on this path, there's a payday coming in the end. You may have good intentions that you want to serve the Lord. You may have good intentions that you want to give your offerings and tithes. You've got good intentions to show up, but you're on the wrong path. There's a multitude of people who come to church that will end up in hell. That's the truth. I read this passage, and it's like the Lord sets off the alarm in my own mind. Now, notice what he says here. There's a large path that a multitude of people are on, and they're so confused and convinced they're on the right path that they're still going to end up in hell. Listen, if this doesn't shake our foundation, I'm talking about change, right? We're making changes in our life. You want to make a real change? You've got to determine which path you're really on. Here's the thing. I'm not here to confuse you on which path you're on. You, you know. But don't fool yourself that you're on the straight and narrow when you're really on the highway. Don't confuse yourself because in the end, you're going to wish you had thought this through this day, this moment, here at this church with this passage. Notice what he says. He says, Enter ye into straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go. Verse 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And I want you to underline these words. There's few, circle it, there's few that find it. Few. I'm reading this passage and I'm like, Lord, only a few people get this? I, I, now, I don't know the number of a few. I mean, because there's a, a whole host of people in the world. So what's the number of a few? I, I don't know that. But, but here's what he said in his word. It, it's the alarm this morning for us, right? It's the alarm for us. Check yourself. Only a few of us get it. That's what he said. He says, few there be that find it. The gateway to life is narrow. I and mean, this translation is saying not only is it narrow, but it's difficult. And only a few ever find it. I'm not huge on statistics. That's just me. It's my personality. But I'm reading this, and I like this here. It says, now think about this. 10% of church members cannot be found. Well, I don't know if it's lost or what. 20% of church members never attend church. Never attend church. 25% of them admit they never pray. 35% admit they do not read their Bibles. 40% admit they never contribute to the church, whether it's their tithes or their offerings. 60% never give to missions. 70%, 70 of church members never assume responsibility within the church. That's 7 out of 10 of us never assume responsibility within the church. We would rather pay for someone else to do that than to assume responsibility. And let's be honest, responsibility brings a big old headache, amen. Like, everybody wants that promotion at work where you go from 
what you've got to a hundred or two hundred thousand with no responsibility. Can I get an amen? <laughs> uh, you want that two hundred, you're gonna have some headaches, right? Do you believe there's headaches in the church? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're people. <laughs> We're people with different backgrounds, different families, different beliefs. We were raised differently, right? Like, like my kid and, and mine, Cindy's like, what would your mom do to you? She would wear me out. That's what she'd do. And we're trying to talk this thing through. That's why I'm weak. <laughs> right? That's a shocker. That's really, I'm dwelling on that a lot. Seven out of ten of us never assume responsibility within the church. Seven out of ten of us. We would rather pay our, we would rather do that, right? Like, if Connor gets money and he doesn't spend, I'll tell you what he does with it. He gives it to his sister. <laughs> Isn't that nice, though? I thought, man, sis, where'd you get that extra five? Connor gave it to me. That's cool, man. Why did you give sis five dollars? Well, she's going to be my slave for two years. <laughs> for five dollars. Two years. That's a, that's a lot of wrongs there. Uh, two years. I said, man, five dollars for two years. Now, sis is thrilled with that because she doesn't know any better. And I think he does. I'm pretty sure he does. And my, I'm thinking, Connor, why would you? He said, because I don't want to pick up my socks and I don't want to pick up this towel and I don't want to have to go do that. He didn't want to assume responsibility. He don't want to do that. He, he wants to be a part of the family. He wants to eat. He wants to laugh. He wants to fellowship. He'll go places with us. He wants no responsibility when it comes to it. You know, we, some of us never really outgrow that. I mean, we join the church. We're a follower of Christ. We're here. We're worshiping. And, and we really don't want to do those things. We, we don't want to be a part of building the kingdom of God. We're, we're that 70... We never really assume responsibility. We've never taught a class and maybe it's not teaching. Uh, we, we've never swept the floor. We've never shown up early. We, we've never brought in, done something extra. We, we just don't do that because that's not who I am. There's people that do those things and within the kingdom of God, that is not true. Because I'm convinced that the people... Maybe the, the, the few that get it are the ones that... Maybe it's the 30% that really get it and they found the straight and narrow. 85% of church members never invite anyone to church. 95% have never won anyone to Christ. But 100% of church members expect to go to heaven. We want it. We want it. We don't want to do anything to get there. And that's our path. And it seems right to us to do that. It seems right to us to live this way and do these things. He said, it seems right. Matthew chapter 7, 13, all the way through 29, Jesus is painting as clearly as possible. He's, he's looking here, and he's showing us all the ways. He says there's two, there's all these twos you know, between the path that leads to destruction or a way that leads to life. And I, and I notice what you, you look at verse 29 in particular, and notice what happens here. He says, for he taught them. Jesus is teaching them as one having authority. Authority, that's who Jesus is. He had authority. He had the, the power and the ability to say, this is the truth. Amen. And I bank on that because I'm God's son in the flesh. <laughs> this is the truth. There's only a few of you that get the straight and narrow. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not here to question you. I'm like praying at the house. I'm like, Lord, come on. Did I get it? I mean, you know the devil has a way of doing it. Did I get it? <coughs> Is there, is there really enough evidence here to convict me of being a follower of Christ? I, I was thinking about being young. It's just it's not a coincidence these guys show up. I'm like, man, it's really cool because, you know, one time we was at this church and they had a basketball court and we had a lot of kids show up for basketball. <laughs> Not for the Bible, but for basketball. But I loved it. I thought, man, that's great. Because before they leave, I'm going to tell them about God. <laughs> Amen. But they were on a path that they thought was right. I'm going to church. I'm playing basketball. That's not what it's about. 
It's about winning souls to the kingdom. Notice what he tells us in verse 14. This is what he's saying. He says it's difficult. This thing's difficult. There's, there's a gateway to life. It's very narrow. The road's difficult. Only a few ever find it. He says it's only by grace and it's grace alone. But it is not easy. It takes obedience on your part. Remember our first sermon? It takes knowledge of the truth, repentance, and submission to Christ as Lord. It takes enthusiasm for us to be willing to obey His will and His word, those lasting words. He says if you get into my word. It will change who you are forever. We're not in his word. Well, how do you know? Look at how we live. <laughs> Look at how we live. I'm talking about the church. Would you want to be part of the church today? Listen to a guy who said, you know why teenagers do not come to church? I thought, well, why don't they come to church? Man, if we knew that answer, we'd get them all here. He said, they don't come to church, teenagers, young adults, college. They don't come to church because they've been there. They've been to church. They don't want any part of that hypocrisy. They don't want any part of that people who, let's just break it down, who are fake. We don't want any part of people who aren't serious. When kids get serious about something, they get serious. Right? Now, whether you can ski or not, when you went out there, you probably pretty, I mean, yeah, I, I was. I mean, I get out there, I didn't know what I was doing, but I wanted to act like I did, right? I was telling my brother back, I said, I tried to impress my wife, then girlfriend at the time. I, I wanted to snowboard. <laughs> I wanted to impress her. It did not work. <laughs> it was pitiful. I was embarrassed the entire trip. Obedience and enthusiasm. Remember our prayer? We're closing with this prayer. Remember our prayer? This is your prayer for 2013. Maybe by the end of the year, this prayer would be like super long. Remember what it said? It never seems like there's enough hours in the day to do everything. Help me discern the difference between what's important and what is unimportant. Help me set my priorities in a way that's pleasing to you. I pray for strength, courage, discipline, and motivation to get started each and every day. The experts of the world say that if I stick to it for 30 days, I'm three times more likely to succeed. Start a new habit in your life today. And then maybe you'll be known as a pillar of the church. That when the world crumbles, you're still holding up the truth of his word. You hear that? Amen. I'm not, I want you to hear this. I refuse because there's blame enough to go around. I refuse to place all the blame of this nation on our leaders, our government. I refuse. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if we don't look at ourselves, we'll never get this right. I expect them to do what they do. But I refuse. I'm telling you, I do. I've made up my mind. I've gone through all this. I've looked at it. I, I keep looking. I keep praying. I'm not just going to lay all that blame on them. Here's what I'm going to lay it on. I'm going to lay it on the followers of Christ that refuse themselves to do what Christ has asked them to do. He said, find the straight and narrow. When you're on the straight and narrow, he says, stay there. Stay and cling to my word. Here's what's happening. We have a generation of people that are dying out. And these young people are left without the heritage and the truth of the word. And they'll raise a generation and it'll water down and water down and water down. But where are we, church, when we're not reading His Word and praying to an almighty God? He says there's a path that very few people find. What path are you on this morning? Every head bowed, eyes closed, no one looking.